this evening's Mass offered for the repose of the souls of Rosemary Whitehead, Irma and Rick Tice, and Isabella Rizzi. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. desert and the parched land will exult. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. <clears throat> they will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble. Make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Lord, come and save us. Lord, come and save us. The Lord God keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. The Lord, come and save us. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord raises up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. The Lord come and save us. The fatherless and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, through all generations. The Lord come and save us. A reading from the letter of St. James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You too must be patient. Make your hearts firm, because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to the Lord. When John the Baptist heard in prison of the works of the Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question, are you the one who is to come or should we look for another? Jesus said to them in reply, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, Lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the good news preached to them, and blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus 
began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Very often, I recommend that you put a marker in your Bible to certain books, books that if you turn to them, you can get a lot out of them. Old Testament books, Wisdom, Sirach, I've recommended to you to read when you want to just calm your souls and say some prayers and you want to start off with a good thought. Proverbs is another one, another one of the Old Testament books. If you want an Old Testament book that tells of the journey through life with all its worries and troubles and dangers, you want to read the book of Tobit in the Old Testament. These are Old Testament books that just, you can pick up your Bible and you'll understand them. There'll be no problem. I give you a New Testament book, very easy to understand, the Epistle of St. James. It's in the back of the Apostles. Their epistles, the Epistles were sermons that the Apostles wrote to the people they had converted. St. Peter has epistles, St. Jude has a small one, St. John has epistles, St. James has one epistle, and it is great. Why? Because unlike St. Paul, who wrote in run-on sentences that go on for 20 lines, using commas, semicolons, colons, and you look at this and you say, wow, good for him. He remembered all that stuff we learned in school. He actually knows how to use a semicolon. In it, and they go on and on. And by the time you get to the end of his sentence, you don't go, what, you have to go back. Now, what was this about? After all the clauses that St. Paul includes, unlike his epistles, St. James was a fisherman. Uh, he wasn't a tremendously educated person. He wrote simple thoughts in simple sentences. You want to read something, you read the spiritual advice that the apostle St. James gave in his epistle in the back of the Bible. It's not that long, maybe about eight or nine pages. Of the apostles, off the top of my head, I'm going to say that in the Gospels, I don't remember St. James ever speaking. I don't remember any lines that I could say. St. James was quoted as saying this in the Gospel. And yet, whenever our Lord had something big that was coming, he always included St. James. Um, when he went to the top of Mount Tabor to be transfigured, he took St. Peter. Well, that makes sense. He was the head of the apostles. He took St. John. That made sense also. John was the only apostle who was loyal to him to the very end. Stand, stood at the foot of the cross, 
didn't care if they arrested and crucified him too. He was the one that sat next to our Lord at the Last Supper, wrote a beautiful gospel, beautiful epistles. Yes, I can understand he chose Peter and John, but he would always pick James. And it'll mention in the gospels, you'll hear it, that these seem to have been the three that he kept closest to him. And yet St. James really doesn't speak. There are no lines for St. James in the Gospels. All we know about St. James are the things that he wrote in his epistle. And there we see a man who had a spirituality that is very simple, direct, and makes good common sense. Because one other thing about St. James, probably, my guess, why did God keep him so close when he didn't really say anything in the Gospels? Every apostle was meant to spread the Gospel. The Word of God, they were to get out to the whole world. The apostles went after our Lord's resurrection on missionary journeys. St. James was the first apostle to be martyred. So he was only around for a few years after our Lord. St. James didn't get a chance to do the missionary journeys that St. Peter did or St. John did, or St. Paul did, and go all, all over the Mediterranean world preaching the gospel. But St. James did something amazing. St. James appeared at the time that Spain, this was around the 800s, early 900s, Spain had been completely taken over by the Moors. The Moors, wherever they took over, eventually forced the people to give up their Christian religion. They made them pay extra taxes, they couldn't get certain jobs, they became third-class citizens in their own country, and this was done in other places to try and force the people to give up their faith. And eventually, in the other countries where this was done, it happened. So the Moors conquered all of Spain except a little corner up in the top. And the Apostle St. James appeared to the bishop of that little corner up in the top of Spain, in the mountains that had not yet been conquered. And St. James the Apostle told this bishop, go tell the king, if he is brave, if his soldiers are holy and receive their sacraments, I will fight for them in heaven so that they can take their country back. And what they called the Reconquista began. And St. James fought in heaven for this small group of people, and eventually they pushed the Moors out of Spain, back into North Africa, and Spain was saved for the Catholic faith. Why is that important? Because it was Spain then who brought the Catholic faith to about half the world, Central America, South America, the Philippines, many places, in Africa. The faith was brought there from Spain. So St. James, who didn't seem to have the time, he was killed very early, to be an apostle and spread the faith, made this covenant with the people of Spain. You hold dear the faith and be an apostle, spread it throughout the world, and I will be your special saint in heaven, St. James. So in today's second reading, St. James 
is talking to us. He's giving us advice. And he's giving us advice about two things, about patience and about a sin we never think of. How simply he puts. He gives us an example. He says, God has a plan and God's plan will happen. We get impatient because whatever it is we wish to happen, justice, goodness, the overcoming of evil, we want it to happen right away. And if it doesn't happen in our time, we get very impatient. And St. James reminds us, he says, look at the farmer. The farmer plants a seed. The seed is in the ground. The farmer doesn't see the seed at work. The, father, the farmer doesn't see the rain soak into the earth and touch the seed. The farmer doesn't see the little roots begin to sprout on the bottom of the seed and the leaves reaching for the air on the top of the seed. And the farmer knows when you see those first buds, don't touch them. Just like anything that comes up in your garden in the spring. You see the first buds and you're very happy. Don't touch those buds. Leave them alone. God is at work. They're going to grow into leaves and fruit and flowers, but not because you touch them and make it happen. Leave them alone. God is at work. He will accomplish his purpose. And St. James reminds us of that. God is at work in the world. For thousands of years, God planned to send his son, and he did. And for 2,000 years, <clears throat> his son, working through his church and working through the saints in heaven, has tried to touch people's souls and make them holy, good, better than they are. And God is at work, and we don't always see the work. But God is at work, and sometimes we do get little peaks of God's work. Don't touch it. Leave it alone. God is at work. It will grow. So he gives us very good advice on patience, on how God works, and how we want it to be quick. God is doing it. Don't touch it. Let him do it. The other thing that he tells us, and it's something that I rarely ever hear anyone confess. I don't think I confess it enough myself. And St. James, the apostle, giving us good advice, he says, do not complain about one another that you may not be judged. Ooh, that's kind of very simply put, St. James, but the arrow hits the target. Do not complain about one another so that you may not be judged. Sometimes in our impatience, we don't want to wait for another person to grow. We don't see the fact that we grew ourselves that we didn't start out as finished products, that we had to learn. And sometimes we learn by listening, sometimes we learn by mistakes. And we took three steps forward and two steps back and four steps forward and only one step back. That sometimes learning, understanding is a process. And another person may not be where I want them to be in the process at the moment. And so what do I do then? I start complaining about that person. I start complaining because I know that you're not supposed to say things like that. That person doesn't 
know that yet. I know you're not supposed to act like that. That person doesn't seem to know that you're not supposed to act like that yet. They haven't learned that. Yeah, but Father, they're 55. Well, <laughs> they haven't learned it yet. The presumption is God is at work, but in this case, the seed is growing even slower than most other seeds grow. And St. James tells us, pay attention to what's supposed to grow inside of you. And don't be watching other people. And don't be complaining about other people who aren't at the same stage of growth, understanding, propriety of actions that you are at. Pay attention to yourself and be sure you nourish the seed of faith in your soul with prayer, with the sacraments, so that your seed can grow and can grow speedily and can grow into a fruitful plant that benefits everyone around them. But in the meantime, you're going to need other plants that aren't growing as quickly and maybe haven't grown at all. He says, be careful. Be careful because if you start judging them for their imperfections, I'm going to start judging you for your imperfections. So he not only counsels patience and explains to us what patience is all about, but then he goes on to tell us, if you can't have patience with each other, are you going to turn to God then and say, God, you have patience with me? God, when I make a mistake, will you be patient with me, God? I'm learning. You're going to ask God to be patient with you, and you don't have patience with other people? <clears throat> Do not complain about one another so that you may not be judged. St. James, in all the Gospels, I don't think he ever opened your mouth and said anything that anyone thought, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, thought was worth writing down. Apparently, he didn't say anything, but God included him on all the big moments, along with Peter and along with John, because in his own way, James was soaking in, and James was understanding, and James knew what he had to accomplish, and James understood the wisdom of God. And if he didn't say anything in the Gospels, when he sat down to write his epistle, this letter of teaching, he said an awful lot. Want to read something nice in the Bible? He said more. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please stand for the creed. I believe in one God. Yeah.
Blessed be the kingdom of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, now, forever, for ages, unto endless ages. Amen. Amen. The response to each petition will be, Lord, have mercy. For peace in our world, an end to violence wherever people are being persecuted, driven from their homes, or put to death, especially in Ukraine, that through the intercession of Mary, Queen of Peace, God's gift of peace might soon be obtained. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. That more young men and women will hear God's call to their religious vocations and follow his voice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For our Pope Francis and our Bishop John, that God may continue to guide them in strength and wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. That civil leaders will use their authority to provide bread for the hungry, life for the unborn, and justice for the oppressed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick of the parish, especially Jimmy Hughes and Christine Ice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deceased family and friends and the souls of those enrolled in our parish purgatorial society for this month, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O oh God, help, save, pity, protect us who call upon you in faith. For we do rely on the intercession of Blessed Virgin Mary, imploring St. Gennaro, all the saints. We commend ourselves, each other, our whole lives, to Christ our God, to thee be glory for ages unto endless ages. Amen. Amen. These are the announcements for this week. Tuesday evening, December 13th, we will celebrate the Feast of St. Lucy. The Mass will be celebrated in Italian at 7 p.m. No 8 a.m. Mass. Traditional St. Lucy's food will be available after Mass in the parish center. 2023 collection envelopes and calendars are available for pickup. Please see one of the volunteers at the end of the Mass in the rear of the church. Please consult the bulletin for details about our St. Nicholas gifts to the poor program. So, to share in our Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the wine. We offer you fruit of the vine, work of you, and hence it will become our spiritual drink. Yes. With humble spirit and trite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord Jesus Christ have mercy on us. For the praise of His name, for our Lord and Lord Jesus Christ. Again, let us pray. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. So with angels, archangels, thrones, 
dominions, the hosts, the powers of heaven. We sing the hymn of your glory, and without end we acclaim. Santus, 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 Santus Dominus Deus Jesus Christ. <coughs> At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we, we proclaim in the Lord, and confess the resurrection unto you. Amen. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, bread of life, chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember brothers and sisters fallen asleep in hope of resurrection, all who die in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Blessed Apostles, the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Who 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of your Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with Amen. your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord,
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.